Hey guys, we're good and moving on to day 31 today. Our topic is unemployment. You'll want those um, notes that we've had out the uh, last few days uh, to fill out this last chart about unemployment. Okay, so anyway, we're going to get started here with a, with a daily blog. Go ahead and uh, pause it. What I want you to do is I want you to pick who you would consider to be unemployed in these um, out of these uh, 10 or so people. Okay, so go ahead. Just kind of read through them real quick. Pick who you think would be unemployed based on, you know, who the government uh, would take care of also, if you want to look at it that way. All right, I'm going to start crossing off people that are not considered unemployed. Okay, so <clears throat> the rule for unemployment is that I've got to be not having a job and looking for one. Okay, so notice for the top two, I'm crossing off people that are not necessarily looking for work. Construction worker didn't work enough that he wants to, but he's not unemployed. Okay, we're going to say this person's not looking for a job. Second grade students don't. Drug dealers not looking for a job. Teachers not looking for a job. Injured not looking for a job. And this person is the tricky one. Letter J is the tricky one because she gave up and she's not looking anymore. So really, your only person that is looking for a job right there that does not have one is option B. Okay, so that's going to help you as we as we talk about our definition moving forward here. Um, so understand that every person is going to fall into one of three categories. I'm either employed. That means I worked at least one hour. All right. That's what the government sets it at. If I work for one hour, I'm considered employed. I'm either unemployed, that means jobless, actively looking for work, okay? So I've gotta be putting applications in, and basically how the government knows that is they just ask you, okay? So there's a survey, they call people, and they go through and, and basically, um, you know, they just ask you some characteristics about, about what you've done, okay? So um, again, how accurate it is, I mean, it seems to be halfway accurate. I don't think people lie too much, but at the end of the day, that's basically how it works. And they can go through the unemployment office as well and, and try to figure out some stats that way. Um, and then last, but, and then the other way you fit in is not in the labor force. Okay. So like I said, every person is one of these, is one of these three. Okay. So I either have a job, I'm looking for a job, or I'm not looking for a job right now. So um, anyway, those are, those are three distinctions that you probably not in the labor force is not one we really uh, think about too much. So this is a historical, uh, well, it's about 20 years, um, a historical graph of unemployment in the United States. So you can see um, in two, these gray bars represent recessions. Okay, so back in 2001, we had a recession after 9-11. 2008, 2009, we had a recession a little bit longer. Our unemployment rate got up to about 10% for a short period of time. And then obviously with this COVID stuff over here, um, you know, a, a pretty significant um, spike in unemployment for what's turning out to be a pretty short period of time, at least here in the in the short term. So we'll see how that goes. But um, you can see that how serious things were with the COVID stuff up almost 15 percent. That's that's as high as the unemployment rate's been basically since the Great Depression. Obviously, it wasn't sustained for very long and, and people are starting to get back to work at this point. Um, but just to give you an idea of what's like normal, right? So, you know, this four to six percent range is considered, you know, pretty normal in terms of like successful United States um, economies. OK, you get above this seven, this seven percent, this above this six percent here. That's usually considered pretty bad. And obviously we had over seven percent unemployment for like three years. OK, maybe even four years, depending on. Yeah, I would call it four years. So anyway, um, just to give you an idea of what what. Uh, you know, is normal. Okay. <clears throat> so how it's figured is not as tricky as some of you are going to think that it is. All right. So what we do is we take the unemployed and we're going to divide it by the labor force. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. Okay. So once you do it a couple times, you'll know, you'll realize that, oh, this is actually pretty easy. Um, but the tricky part is, is that the labor force, okay, the labor force equals the unemployed plus the employed. 
So that's what we've got to remember. And usually that number is given to you. Okay, so but sometimes you got to do that math for you by yourself. But the labor force is the unemployed plus the employed. So if we go back to, okay, um, our definition here, these people are taken out. We don't worry about those people. They're not in the equation. Okay, we're trying to get as accurate of a, of a uh, statistic as we can. So anyway, that's your, you probably want to write this stuff down in your notes. Okay, it's tough to type on a PowerPoint, that, but that's why it's not in fraction form. Why it's important is it's going to show us how efficient our economy is working. Again, efficiency means we're using all of our resources. Well, if we have a high unemployment rate, that means we're wasting resources one way or the other. Um, and we also know that if a lot of people are unemployed, we're either underproducing and our demand for stuff is probably pretty low, too. And so um, we talk about with GDP, if no one's buying stuff, no one has jobs, no one has an income. That's going to that's going to obviously uh, be not good for an economy. Okay. <clears throat> so. As we said, we're going to take the number of people unemployed, number of people in the labor force, and we're going to divide those numbers into each other. 65 divided by 1,000 in this case equals 6.5%. Okay, multiply it by 100, sorry. Okay, so anyway, we're going to practice a couple here. So, in your daily blogs, we've got a question for you. We've got a country that has a population of 5,000. 35,000 are considered part of the country's labor force. Read that close, right? So here's your labor force. All right. And we've got 4,000 people that are considered actively looking for work. We're going to say that that's unemployed. I kind of changed the verbiage on you a little bit. All right. So take a second, write down the equation, see if you can come up with the answer. You should have something that looks like this. Multiply it by 100, that should equal 11.4%. Okay, so this country's unemployment rate is 11.4%. Now, statistic is not perfectly accurate, okay? And let's just say that in this country, all right, we had we had 1,000 people give up, okay? They give up looking for a job. So that means they are now out of the labor force. We can basically cross those people off okay now if a if an economy has people give up looking for work that's not really that's not usually considered a good thing because they don't have any faith in the economy on top of that too if i don't think i'm going to find a job what am i going to do with my money i'm going to save it it's not going to create incomes for other people okay so we have a new number right we have a new unemployed people 3000 and we have a new labor force. So we got to take that 1,000 out of both. So our new equation is going to be 3,000 divided by 34,000. Don't forget to multiply by 100. That's going to equal 8.8%. Okay. So same economy, different number. We have a higher unemployment rate here, a lower unemployment rate here. That would be, we, we would say like, oh, well, that's, that's kind of good. No, it's extremely bad because people have left the labor force, right? That's not a good thing. So um, that's one of the inaccuracies of the stat. It has to do with those, those people are called discouraged workers. You're going to see that word here in a second to write down in your notes. So let's just prove our point. Let's flip it. Let's start back over and go back to our, you know, 4,000 people are unemployed, 35,000 people are in the economy, or I'm sorry, in the labor force. Let's just flip it. Let's just say, hey, this economy is doing awesome. Maybe then we get a thousand people that decide to um, look for a job. Okay, so we change our numbers again. Now we've got five thousand people unemployed. And again, when this type of stuff happens, hopefully, hopefully it's for a short period of time that we're unemployed. But now we have thirty-six thousand in the labor force. We had to add a thousand to both. Do the math. You should get somewhere between somewhere around thirteen point nine percent. Okay, so. What we would consider a good thing, people have faith in the economy. However, our unemployment rate goes up, right? The uh, the statistic is a little bit is a little bit inaccurate in those in those types of circumstances. And that's happened a few different times throughout history. When our unemployment rate was 10% back in 2009, um, so right here we're talking right right there. Some people said that the reason that this went down 
from like this point to this point is because people just gave up. And so there's stats that show like the participation workforce percentage and, and that number was going down. So people decided not to work at all. So again, like I said, the statistic is a little bit, is a little bit, um, you have to understand what you're looking at to completely, to completely get a feel for what the economy is doing. All right. So what causes it? We kind of mentioned already, we're going to look at lower demand for products, whatever that, whatever that's caused by. And one of the tricky things for an economy is if, you know, let's just say, um, I don't know, teachers lose their job. Okay. So now teachers lose their job. They stop buying stuff. Let's just say they stop going out to eat. So now, when, now waiters and waitresses might lose their job. Well, then they're going to stop going to the movies. So this lower demand for products starts trickling through the economy. And the reason why the government wants to take care of people with unemployment insurance is to prevent some of those extreme lower demand for products, right? So the government wants us to believe that even if we lose our job, we're still going to have some income and we'll still be able to, and we'll still be able to support ourselves, not have to get kicked out of our house, not have to do all those sorts of things that are, that are extremely tragic. So the government's going to give us, give us some of those, um, give us some of those, uh, some income to support us through those times. Okay. So it's more, sometimes you've heard, heard it called a stimulus plan sometimes. And, and, and that would be what would happen at the beginning of COVID. The government sent out that stimulus plan to families based on how many kids they got. They're trying to, they're trying to prevent the lower demand for products. They want you to still spend money. So why it's not perfect. We mentioned this idea of discouraged workers. Those were our practice problems. It cannot keep track of involuntary part-time workers. So Again, a lot of times in an economy, even though an economy is doing really, even though the unemployment rate's not as bad as it looks, um, the economy might not be doing as well because people are people are earning less money, right? So if I worked 40 hours last week and I only worked 25 hours this week, and I'm going to expect to work 25 hours the next week, that's not going to be good for an economy. It's going to make me save my money. It's going to make a whole bunch of workers save their money because I wouldn't be the only one, right? Um, so it can't keep track of that. It also doesn't keep track of illegal illegal earnings um, and people that you know make money that that claim not to. Which I don't know if that's a huge huge problem in terms of finding the statistic. At the end of the day, um, <clears throat> high unemployment is bad. People aren't able to buy stuff. People aren't paying taxes. Okay, so it's a double negative for the government because um, the people that are collecting unemployment are not paying taxes. And if we get this number too high, the government's going to go worse into debt. OK, so um, it's a double negative. Not only am I not receiving taxes, I am distributing money in the form of unemployment insurance to people to support them while they while they are looking for a job. All right. So that's unemployment. Um, we will talk tomorrow on the types of unemployment. It will be really quick and. Um, you know, make sure you get them written down. The definitions of the type of unemployment are important for the uh, for the uh, test. So uh, make sure that you are make sure that you are on top of those.